Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you already know that, don't you? That's why you're watching. I'm joined today by my good friend Rico from London, originally Finland, co-founder Porky's Corner with me. How are you doing, Rico? Good, thanks, Big P. How are you? All right, I'm plodding on. Thought I'd uh, have a chat to you before I go put some graft in. So, yes. uh, what have you been up to? Same as everybody else, being locked at home and a bit shocked by the news last night because I was here on Sunday saying that's never going to happen. So, I must admit I was wrong on that one. But mm. you know what? Eddie talks so much that you never be- you never know what to believe, do you? No, we don't. It's uh... Look, is he involved in this fight, him? Yeah, I think the same way I was involved with the Triple G fight, right? He puts on the events. Mm. Yeah. And supplies fighters on occasion. So for this one, he's sort of co-promoting it and he'll probably put the undercard together. And he's the man at the zone at the moment because he's the only promoter they're working with. And that's how he likes it, isn't it? Yeah, they work with occasional Golden Boy fighters. They, they like Ryan Garcia, but I think... That's how he likes it. He's going way back in there by Oscar just being off the radar and, you know, occupied with other stuff. Can Callum Smith, with three wins against former, current and future world champions, beat Canelo Alvarez, who's younger, stronger, punches harder, pound for pound, and he's beat 15. So it's three versus 15, if we want to talk numbers. Can he beat... World champions, yeah. Champions. Can Callum Smith beat Canelo? No, I think he struggles against shorter fighters, so he struggled against um, quite a bit against John Ryder, and he probably lost that fight. And also, his performances against that kickboxer weren't impressive. If you think about his mark, his best win, George grows with one hand, effectively, and who else has he really beat that is of note or is at even the level of opposition that Canelo's faced by Rocky Fielding in the last few years? Could Callum Smith surprise us? Because when we look at his CV, he doesn't shout and ball. He's ended up a multi-millionaire. He's a very wealthy young man, but he doesn't shout and ball. He doesn't get himself out there. Is there something inside him that we haven't seen yet? Because he's not really got out of third gear, has he? No, but you know what? I like Callum Smith and I think he's a good fighter, but I think Canelo might be a step too far. Team Canelo are in control of their own destiny at the moment, so they saw something in his armour and they've accepted that fight for that very reason. Um, And also they've got the ring magazine belt on the line, so it's another ring magazine belt for Canelo. So I think Callum Smith is so conventional that it's a bit like the Kovalev fight, except... Kovalev is a bigger guy and hits harder than Callum Smith. So I think it's a perfect fight for Canelo because the blueprint for the Kovalev fight is fairly similar to the fight against Callum Smith. Yeah. When I look at the uh, opponents Canelo's be, for example, and who he's been in with, Can I, Gennady Golovkin's a massive puncher. He, he threw a kitchen sink at Canelo, couldn't budge him. Kovalev did, couldn't budge him. So how can Callum Smith hurt him? I think it's probably keeping the fight at distance and winning on points because Canelo will look to attack the body some of the way that he did against Kovalev. So I think the only ways he can keep Canelo at distance and try and box him using his longer arms and reach. But Canelo is quite comfortable coming in, uh, moving his head. He's very adapted to that and coming to the body and winning that way. Yeah. Uh, all right then. Uh, if it goes to points, will Canelo Alvarez get the nod, or will there be any funny business? Do you think if will Callum get the nod? I mean, if Callum's winning fight, would he get the nod over there? I think he has to score a knockout to get a draw in Vegas. Sorry, in Texas in this occasion, but Canelo's never going to lose on his own promotion, co-promotion, by technically his own promotion. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, this is how I look at it, right? Callum Smith has been probably, well, everybody. It's not probably he has been. He's been the most protected fighter 
that this country's ever produced, I think. He's not not been let off at leash, has he? A bit like Billy Joe. They've been protected, aren't they, the pair of them? Mm-hmm. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, this fight, because John Ryder, where does this leave him? I mean, he must be thinking, what, what's Eddie Hearn doing for him? Uh, I wouldn't say it leaves a bad taste because Eddie Hearn's doing a good job by getting the Callum Smith, the Canelo fight, because that's a bigger fight. But I think the biggest question here is, <clears throat> where does it leave Sky and Eddie Hearn? Right? Sky had built up Callum Smith. They've invested a lot of money in him and now his biggest fight's taking place on another platform in the UK and his other biggest fight against Groves took place on another platform in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Eddie never delivered world title for him. It was Kala Sauland, wasn't it, for who delivered That's it. correct. And now it looks like he's not going to be on Sky. It's going to be on Dazone in the UK, am I right? That's correct. Worldwide, apart from Mexico. Worldwide, apart from Mexico. But yeah, it's not on Sky. But yet, Callum Smith's been built up by Sky. So, where does that leave Mr. Bean and Eddie Earn with their relationship? Have they been mugged off? Because Eddie Earn's now pushing his own product in the UK, but he's got a deal with Sky. So, is the Sky deal, does that look, does that look like it's over now? I don't think it's over, but Sky might have to sign individual contracts with fighters similar to what they did with AJ and sign one with Callum Smith, sign one with AJ, sign one with Warrington, yeah. X amount of fights rather than signing one with Matchroom and then they'll probably have a certain amount of Matchroom shows. But ultimately, Sky, Eddie's only pushed Sky in terms of pay-per-view, but he's never said subscribe to Sky, you've got the best boxing content. He only says buy the pay-per-view, so... This serves Eddie in many ways, but actually it's to a detriment of um it's to a detriment of Sky Sports in many ways to launch a big event was a UK fighter that time. Do you feel that Eddie Earns used Sky for his own agenda since he got the five year deal? Yeah, but all promoters do. Yeah. I mean all promoters do it to one degree or another. Um but I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens after the fight and, you know, in the build-up as well, how they promote this, how Eddie promotes this differently uh, to, you know, a normal Sky show or how he pushes this by pushing the zone because effectively he has to push the zone to get this fight to do well and that's in his interest. Where does it leave... Uh... Matchroom, Sky, Eddie Earn. Where, 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 where are all? Where, where does it leave all them now? Because and the YouTubers. Where does it mainly leave these YouTubers that get access all the time with, with Eddie, and they've got obviously they get on with a Sky lot. But that now the 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 little cult that they've got. We know they are. We don't need to mention them. Where does it leave the cult of YouTubers that hang out of the back of Eddie Earn? They're going to have to do as they're told now, aren't they? By Eddie Earn. Yeah, but I mean, for them, it's all about numbers, isn't it? So if they can get Callum Smith to do good numbers by interviewing him and interviewing the people around him, then that's the thing. Um, they'll still be, you know, YouTubers, they have an endless resource of people to interview. So they'll continue interviewing the other people on Sky shows. They'll interview people on this card. Who goes on this card is going to be interesting. So who's going to be on the undercard? Are they going to be named Sky Fighters that could headline their own events? Are they going to be investing heavily in this card? I don't think they will. No, I think they'll just put, you know, your minor guys on there. But where I see a problem is, this is where I see a problem. I know how boxing can be. It's ego-driven and it's full of insecure people. Uh, but I see a problem with... They're on the outside looking in now, aren't they? Bean and Ed Robinson, right? Who's mm -hmm. going to be held accountable at Sky for this fiasco? Because we now have Eddie Earn pushing a Sky fighter on another channel in the UK. That is going to have massive ramifications. It's a big word for me, that. It's going to have massive <laughs> ramifications for for Sky, surely, and for the, for the old look. It's like having a rotten egg in a dressing room now, isn't it? But Eddie will front well, it out because he's got a brass neck, hasn't he? 
Well, there's going to be an elephant in the room, isn't there? Oh, and... a massive one, a six foot five one, 19 stone. We're a comb over called Edward John Hearn. He played everybody, hasn't he? He has, but you know why? It's the only way to make this fight. I mean, he's doing, it's tricky for him as well, isn't it? In the sense that he's the winner, but to get this fight, he's had to put it on an international platform. Sky is a UK only platform, so Canelo's not going to fight exclusively on Sky. Um, part of the probably how to get the money up was to give the whole rights to the zone. Otherwise, and they have the worldwide distribution that Sky doesn't have. Do you think that Eddie had wanted this in New Year and not so close to the Joshua Pool F fight? I, I don't think they had a choice. Canelo wanted out this year. I mean, last time he fought was last November against Kovalev. So they just, they, they didn't really have a choice. So Canelo said, take your leave. And I think Canelo, uh, Callum Smith said his management team and Eddie said, yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. What about the brass neck, though, on it, on Eddie? You've got to give him it. He stuck it to Gallagher for the last couple of weeks, and now he's working with him. These people have got no morals, have they, whatsoever? There's no morals in boxing, is there? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if Gallagher wasn't in the corner. Uh, I've said it before, and I just wouldn't be surprised, because why would Gallagher be mouthing off Eddie and Sky and everybody else when his fight is in deep negotiations with Canelo for this fight a few weeks before? Um, and obviously, Callum Smith. Yeah, but Callum, yeah, but Callum Smith signed a new management deal with a new, you know, Anthony or what's it called, Anthony Reddy or whatever his name is, Paul Reddy, Paul Reddy. Yeah, so he signed a new deal with them, a management deal. Joe will get his ten percent if he's in the corner, but maybe he won't be in the corner. I don't, I don't see that. I see Joe. I see Callum Smith as pretty loyal. Right, but then again, as Callum Smith looked at Eddie and Joe spat, and has Eddie been there with wooden spoon, and has he got rid of Joe? Yeah, that's what I mean. That might be the case. So Tesco I Joe will... could now be Lidl Joe then. <laughs> Aldi Joe. Aldi Joe, yeah, fresh fresh fruit and veg at Aldi. It's won an award, hasn't it, this year? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Exciting times ahead. Actually, it's a good fight, though, isn't it? Let's have it right. Both top, yeah. the top of the game, aren't they? Callum Smith is, is going to be tested, isn't he? But they say he's good. So I personally think he's still got that little bit of an amateurish style, you know, standoff. Uh, but, I, I, well, he dealt with George Groves, but that were a shell of a man, wasn't it? It was like a Kell Brook version of Joe, George Groves. Yeah, I mean, he retired straight afterwards and he said his shoulder hadn't healed since the Eubank Jr. fight. But if you look at even someone like Eubank Jr., he has a better record at super middleweight. So he's beat the Gale, uh, Yildrim, who's the WBA regular champion. And he's also beat, um, well, obviously, it'd be Abraham. Yeah. So Callum Smith is fairly Who's untested. Beat Abraham? Who's beat Abraham? Chris Eubank uh, Jr. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He has a better record of super middleweight than um, Callum Smith. Smith. Yeah, Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah, you probably could say that. But then again, Chris Eubank Jr. lost to Groves. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not a fan of triangulation, but yeah, he did lose to Groves. And obviously, Callum Smith has the bigger win. But if you look at the top level wins... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got better wins on his CV. Oh, yeah, he's got a few losses, but... Callum Smith's fairly untested, but again, as he said, it's a it's a good fight, and I think everybody should be fairly happy. And also because it's not going to be on twenty qu twenty quid pay per view, it's going to be on the zone. So, yeah, and the, and that's the tenner for the four month, isn't it? Yeah, let's see what else they can produce for the month because Campbell against uh, Garcia fell through. So basically, Eddie's pushing Dillian White, who's not fought for a European, against Povetkin in his forty second year. For a 20 quid on the night show on Sky. Is that January? End of January? I think so, yes. And you've got Dazone that are charging a tenner, but that's for the full month for content, not one night. So it's half the price and you get 30 days of it and not one day. It's a no-brainer. Well, it's, it's also interesting that Dazone has come to the UK because Eddie's been pushing heavily the, the idea that pay-per-view is dead, right, in the US. Yeah. And that sort of Dazone's what they keep on saying about boxing. And now you've got a big, the, 
a big, very, very big fight involving the Brits, uh, non-pay-per-view social and subscription service, and then you have two pay-per-views. So what are you going to say? Pay-per-view is a good thing for Sky, but then for DAZN, it's not a good thing, and that's going to be putting Eddie in an awkward position, I would say. Mm. What purse do you think Callum Smith's getting for this? <laughs> Whatever Canelo's offering, so I'd say a few million, two, three million, right? I would I would say that because they were talking ten and eight and ten one the other week, and I yeah. think they've now had a little look at the situation. They've been Eddie's kept him at arm's length, and I think now everybody's realizing, oof, we better come to the table now, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And also <clears throat> looking at the NFL, the games, the Dallas Cowboys play in Texas. They can have some fans, but not many fans. So they'll probably be able to have some fans. So that might help. But I think they'll just, Canelo might have some sort of upside on subscriptions from the zone, whereas you have Callum Smith having a flat fee of a few million and then that's it. But it's not bad. It's more a legacy fight for Callum Smith because if he beats Canelo, which I don't think he will, but if he does beat that, then he's a massive star in the US. They'll have big rematch clauses with big upside. If he loses to Canelo, it's still no big deal because he's actually faced the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Do you see any big changes at Sky? Because when's the Sky deal up for Eddie? I think it might be next year. Next year. Next, is it next summer? Probably, yeah. yeah usually you'll be end at boxing is usually July, isn't it? Yeah, I think big big changes. I think it's constantly up in the air and it's been assessed. This pandemic has obviously meant that the quality of shows that can be put on isn't as good as previously. Eddie's done less shows in the US because he just can't go over there. So I think they're constantly assessing and it depends what people like MTK can bring to the table, what happens with the World Boxing Super Series. So there's a lot of moving parts, but I think it will go down to the Y and they'll decide something. But I do envisage they'll probably sign some form of contract with Matt Troon, but they might have more stipulations than they have previously had where they've just given him a free reign and just said, you do whatever you want, but you're stable. Now they might say, OK, the zone's in the UK, so we need this from you and we need these fighters on our platform exclusively. Yeah, do you see any big changes with the pundits at Sky? <laughs> I mean, you can only hope, but I don't see because, again, they live in their own echo chamber. So whatever the fans and us say on Twitter, they just dismiss it and then they happy with the pundits. And as I've always said, these people are mates with each other, so they're not going to get rid of their mates based on public opinion, uh, even if it's for the betterment of the sport. What did you think of the cheerleading for Katie Taylor at the weekend? Was that out of control from Bean and uh, Macklin? Yeah, I mean, look, Katie Taylor is not... I spoke about it over the weekend, but Katie Taylor is not the most recognised sports star in the world, um, despite them telling us that, or not the most loved athlete around the world. She's Yeah, she's a great boxer, good ambassador for the sport, but you don't have to convince us that she's the greatest ever female fighter, nor is she the greatest ever athlete I've loved. Looking at the views, they've not released the figures yet. They usually do that on a Monday, you know, from the show, but the <laughs> YouTube views were 80, <coughs> 83,000 going into the Sky show. So I'm wondering if maybe it weren't as high as what they were making out. Well, they are. They're making out. So I looked this morning on Sky Sports Boxing and they're making out that 200,000 people tuned in on Facebook and, no, hundreds no, of thousands. Go on YouTube first, won't you? Because it's free and it better. Yeah, and also the whole thing, how the Facebook thing is quite counted, is you can watch it for three seconds and that counts as a view. But they are claiming it's very high views. But again, it wasn't a showcase of good female boxing. So I'm not going to say it did anybody any favours. If anything, it just reinforced the stereotypes of female boxers not being able to take other fighters out. Yeah, it's like on YouTube, you have to watch for a minute before you get it classed as a view. So if you look, yeah. like you flick over, I know Facebook, it, yeah, it's like you said, it's two seconds, isn't it? One second or something. Exactly. You're scrolling and then you stop to watch something and that counts as a view. Yeah. Yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from. But 
Uh, what's your whole opinion on women's boxing at the moment, Rico? I mean, I, I touched on this with Matt the other day. If these are world title fights and world title opponents challenging for world title belts, if that's world level, what is area level? Where, where, <laughs> well, they don't even have British level. That's one thing. The pool is so shallow that it's really hard to say. I think there should be just less weight classes in women's boxing. Um, and then you could probably have better fights. There's too many weight class in women's boxing, in my opinion. What about bunching up the weight? You know, there's 17 weight divisions, in the, as we know, and they're inventing a couple more, aren't they? Or one more, is that much? Mm, one more, yeah. So there's 18 weight divisions. Why don't we go back to having seven weight divisions, like in the olden days, where, I mean, we all make a big thing, don't we, about Kel Brook stepping up from 147 to 160. But in the olden days, if you were 148, you had to fight a 160 guy, didn't you? Yeah. So I think in women's boxing, boxer. yeah, I think in women women's boxing, there's definitely merit to doing that. Mm. And if they did that, it would be uh, interesting and maybe the men could learn something from that because it'd be exciting. I mean, we, we all know that Kel Brook stepping up to middleweight from 147 were dangerous because he were going in with biggest puncher in middleweight history and his first fight of that weight. But if it had been anybody else, it would have been exciting. And, you know, but it, it weren't, was it? Because we knew it was going to be a bloodbath, didn't we? But I think a lot can be learned from the women bunching them together and then, and then the men doing it. For example, Savannah Marshall... We're going to fight. This is how what you just said is correct. Savannah Marshall, we're training for a world title at 175. So I says, what, well, what weight are you going to get in it? She goes, I'll probably get in ring about 171. I said, which yeah. walk around weight, so you won't have to diet. So she walks around six foot one, 12 stone free, but she wouldn't have been getting in at 175 and then rehydrating 15 pounds like the men to 190. But that opportunity got cancelled because of virus, so she dropped down to 168 and then 160. So she just won a world title at 160. So she she can fight between 15 pounds, can't she, in free weight divisions? Yeah, I, I mean, sanctioning fees is the big thing why they wouldn't do it because they can get sanctioning fees from three different weight classes. But in an ideal world, you'd probably have a few less weight classes particularly in lower weights where it's sometimes three or four pound difference between the weight classes, uh, which is just mad because it can't make that much of a difference, three or four pounds. Mm -hmm. Even between 147 and 152, you could make a 150 weight class and you could probably have a 160 one. Yeah. 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 Interesting. All right, then, Rico. Well, listen, I'm going to get off. Uh, I've got to nip to office and I've got to nip back because I've got uh, Reggie off school today but and he's been dropped off here. But listen, uh, all the best. You too, mate. Yeah. Well, I think we need to probably say that it's a good fight and people should probably get behind it and support it because these are the fights we really want to see in boxing. So I don't think either of us have, have any complaints about this. Yeah. Uh, listen, we can't complain. It's a... We got what we wanted, Callum Smith in a test, but if Joe Gallagher is his trainer, he's done well for him, but he's a very, very protective fighter. And I think he's going into this fight when really he should have been fighting a few other people first, shouldn't he? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I personally, we can't say he's thrown on at bust, but if he does get bashed and, and touched up, we can say thrown on the bus can't we because that's what we do in it <laughs> well to an extent yeah i mean fighters are built to be sold aren't they they're built to yeah. be slaughtered rather than actually put in test in in his own stable you have billy joe saunders at 168 and other fighters but they're not tested danny jacobs others but i wouldn't say he's thrown under the bus because it's probably more an indictment on how good canelo is but yeah, yeah i just think you know, I'm pretty sure that it's going to go one way, that fight. But, I mean, credit for Callum Smith for accepting the fight. And it's, it's a good fight to see. And it's nice to have a breath fighting against Canelo. Again, I mean, we know what happened the last time. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. But, uh, do you but remember, this is why we love boxing. This is why we love this sport so much, Rico. 
Rough, <laughs> tough, rugged, durable, compelling, added spice, ready for lift off, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Blue Ribbon Division. What do you think, Matt? Added spice. <laughs> 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 on that note, uh, take care, mate. I'll speak to you soon. You take care. Bye bye, mate. Bye. Yes. Cheers, Rico. Well, that were Rico, aka the Hitman from London. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have an odd day ahead of me now, but I'll get done what I can. Um, we've got an interview with Mozza as well. Uh, better get my skates on. Um, ex-border control referee. He wants to have a chat with me, so it's all looking good. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing.